Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Quick Tips for DaVinci Resolve. And today we're going to take a look at how to do the Ken Burns effect in DaVinci Resolve. And if you're not familiar with uh, what a Ken Burns effect is, basically what it is is taking a still photograph and slowly pushing into it to kind of give the viewer the uh, the the effect or the feeling that it is actually video instead of a photograph. And it was kind of pioneered by uh, a documentary filmmaker by the name of Ken Burns, and so that's why we call it the Ken Burns Effect. You've probably maybe even seen some of his historical videos where he takes old photographs but makes his documentary just a little bit more compelling by slowly pushing in to these uh, old still photographs of World War II and that type of thing. And uh, I think it's kind of a nice effect. It uh, gives a little bit of a, a feeling, an emotion that you wouldn't normally get from a static photograph. So here we have a project where we have, uh, looks like seven still photographs. Let's just lasso them and bring them down to our timeline. Now, when you just drag and drop still photographs on a timeline like this, DaVinci Resolve will, by default, assign each one to be five seconds in length. Now you can change that default setting. If you'd prefer to have your still photographs be 10 seconds in length by default when you drag it down to the timeline, uh, well, you can go into settings and change that. All right, but today we'll just leave it at five seconds for the purposes of this video. All right, so we have our seven still photographs uh, on our timeline. How can we do this Ken Burns effect? Well, first of all, the thing that we should notice is that each one of these stills may not be filling the full screen, depending on the camera that was used to take it. And so the first thing that we might want to do is make them full screen. And uh, you can do that as soon as you bring the timeline cursor over across one of these clips, you'll notice that the video inspector comes on select a clip that you want to zoom in on and then go up to the transform and just uh, bring it up so that it's full screen and uh, let's go on to the next one zoom into full screen or any place where you'd like to start the zoom in and uh, perhaps you'd like to reposition it a bit you can go ahead and do that and just get that uh, still photograph to the point where you would like it when it starts the ken burns effect all right, let's do the rest here. Zoom in first, maybe do a little repositioning. And this one looks like it's already almost filling the screen, but, but maybe we can uh, pull up a little bit, reposition, select the next one, and uh, bring it to the point where we want to start our effect. One more here. Okay, so I think we have them uh, all at the point where we would like to start each slow push in, and uh, so we can begin. Just again, select the clip that you want to uh, do the slow push in, and again, go over to the video inspector and find this option here that says dynamic zoom. And when you turn that on, by default, DaVinci will um, do a slow pull back. Well, actually, <laughs> another problem is it's not a very slow pull back. And so it doesn't really give the effect that we're looking for. What we want to do is do a slow push in. And uh, so what we need to do is go back to our element here, dynamic zoom, and do a swap. And if we hit the swap button, now when we roll it, it is doing the push in. It's still way too fast for our liking, but at least it's going in the right direction. So how do we slow this down? There's actually several ways to do that, to slow things down. But what I found to be the most efficient way is to go up to this pop-down menu here and choose Dynamic Zoom. And then grab the inner red square and pull it back so that it is somewhere about there. And now every photo is going to be a little bit different depending on the resolution of it. 
And so some will require some minor adjustment. I think what you almost have to do is once you've got the setting that you think will work, then go back and try it out and see if you're comfortable. And uh, that's a pretty good speed there. It's maybe still a little bit fast for me, so I might go back and just nudge it back a little bit more. And take another look. That's about right. I like it really slow and subtle, hardly noticeable that it's doing the slow push. And then having this open, we can go to the next one and uh, select the next still photo and see that this option comes back for us. However, you'll notice that now the inner square is green and that means it still hasn't been swapped out. So even though I grab the corner and I notice that the dynamic zoom does automatically come on as soon as I start adjusting this, it's, uh, it's still going to do a pull out instead of a push in until I go over here and hit swap. Now the red is the inner square or rectangle and uh, we'll have it a, as a push in rather than a pull out. So let's take a look at the two. And that's pretty good. To speed this up a little bit is I'll lasso all of the still clips that I want to transform and then go over to dynamic zoom, make the change, hit the swap. And so now, because we had them all selected there and we made the swap, they're all doing the push in. The problem is they're still picking up the default setting of the speed of the push in and so it's still too fast, at least for my taste, that's too fast. And uh, so we need to go and make that uh, change. So we select the third one and uh, make the quick adjustment to each one. And uh... okay, again, we'll kind of want to review this to see if. Uh, the speed of each individual still photograph is uh, still what we like. I think the speed on the airplane was just a little bit slow, so let's go back and adjust that, just pull it back a little bit. Kind of gives you the impression that you're you're following the plane. Uh, I think this really helps um, add a little bit more dynamics to still photographs. However, you're not limited to just uh, using this dynamic zoom option on still photographs. Let's bring in a video clip here. Now this will work the best if you're editing in an HD project, but you're source media, your, your video clip is actually 4K or 8K, just larger than HD. And it's a fairly static shot. And so if we wanted to add just a little bit more feel to this, we could do a slow push in using our uh, dynamic zoom. So let's select the video clip. Let's go to dynamic zoom. We want to do a push in rather than a pull out. So we'll hit swap and uh, Depending on how long we want this to run, you know, it's quite a long clip. If we want to let the clip run the full distance, then we wouldn't have to bring it up so close like we did with the still photographs. We could leave it out to about here. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that even that is uh, so slow that you hardly notice it's pushing in. Let's make an adjustment here where we, we bring it in so we can notice that it's actually pushing in. Even that is kind of slow. Let's bring it back just a little bit more. It's a long clip, and so that's why we're not seeing much change. But you can see the slow push in. Of course, if we um, adjusted the length of the clip to only be about 5, 10 seconds, then we would have to go back in and adjust it. Otherwise, it would be pushing in too quickly. 
So there's a nice slow push in on this static video clip. All right, so there you go, how to do a Ken Burns effect in DaVinci Resolve. Hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a like. And if you haven't already done so, I invite you to subscribe to our growing family of uh, DaVinci students. And uh, we'll see you next time here at Learning Media Skills. So long for now.